Is China's Mars rover Zhurong in trouble? There have been increasing concerns since early January, especially since the South China Morning Post published an article stating that it had confirmed with two internal sources that the rover should have, quote unquote, resumed working by now, but no contact has been established. So what is all this about? And is Zhurong really in trouble? Let's find out. For some brief context, the Zhurong rover is part of China's first ever independent Mars endeavor, the Tianwen-1 mission, which consisted of an orbiter, a lander, and a rover. The mission launched from the Wenchang Space Launch Center on July the 23rd, 2020, successfully inserting itself in a Martian orbit in February 2021. The lander and the rover then successfully detached from the orbiter on May the 14th, following which the rover Zhurong was deployed from the lander a week later, and it has been operating on the Martian surface ever since, in a location called Utopia Planitia. Now the thing is, Mars is a very hostile environment for spacecraft, notably due to three factors. There's the distance with the Earth, which generates a 5 to 20 minute delay in communications, making human intervention more difficult and requiring systems to be a little bit more autonomous. It also requires more advanced communication systems like the use of a Mars relay orbiter and more sophisticated deep space ground stations on Earth. And finally, and more relevant to this episode, there's just the Martian environment itself, where there are wide temperature gaps between night and day, between seasons, and also, more significantly, there are sandstorms which can reduce the efficiency of the solar panels for solar-powered rovers. So back to the Jurong problem. The northern hemisphere of Mars officially entered winter on July the 21st, 2022 with the winter solstice, and this is a period where temperatures are very harsh and can easily drop below minus 100 degrees Celsius. Now this, combined with the lower amount of sunlight and also the frequent occurrence of dust storms in winter, means that for safety purposes, Martian rovers, which rely on solar power, are generally put on standby. This was the case for Jurong, as well as Spirit and Opportunity in the past, although it's worth noting that it's not the case for Perseverance and Curiosity due to their reliance on radioisotope thermoelectric generators, also known as RTGs, rather than solar energy. So Jurong was put into a dormant mode on May the 18th, 2022, two months before the winter solstice in the Martian Northern Hemisphere, and was expected to wake up sometime in December with the arrival of the spring equinox. Yet we are now in the second half of January and there is still no update. In reality, the way the rover is supposed to wake up is not linked to a specific date in December, and it also doesn't rely on any human intervention to wake up. It's basically automatic and linked to only two parameters. The rover, first of all, needs to detect that surrounding temperatures have reached values above minus 15 degrees Celsius, which naturally occurs as Mars moves from winter to spring. And it also needs to detect that it is able to harvest sufficient solar power from the sun, the specific threshold being 140 watts of power. So the optimistic scenario is simply that these requirements have not yet been met. The temperatures may be slightly lower than expected for the season. And if we look at the weather data coming from the Perseverance rover, which is situated some 6.7 degrees to the south of Jurong, temperatures are still around that minus 15 degrees Celsius threshold. And the fact that Perseverance is situated more to the south means that temperatures for Jurong in the north could be even lower. For the solar power threshold, I think it's possible that Martian dust has accumulated on Jurong's solar panels, reducing their solar efficiency, and so the 140 watts threshold may only be reached as the season moves more into spring with longer exposure times and with more favorable solar rate incidence angles. However, the pessimistic scenario would be that something has actually gone wrong with the rover. There's no actual evidence for this yet, so it's a little bit premature to be circulating that kind of info as some headlines have suggested. I'm saying this because Jurong, after all, is equipped to survive very cold temperatures by using low thermal conductivity protective materials like aerogel, by minimizing convection, and by using active thermal control for key instruments. The solar panels are also able to track the sun and are equipped with a special coating, which reportedly gets rid of up to 86% of dust deposits. Yet the failure of the Jurong rover is also definitely a possibility. And I say this because 
Space is hard and especially Mars is hard. We've seen many Mars spacecraft in the past fail early on in their mission life. I'd like to add that if Jurong ceases completely to operate and for good, the mission will still be considered a success, considering that the initial designed lifespan of the rover was roughly 90 days, an objective that's largely been exceeded. And it's also worth noting that it's the first successful non-US mission on the Martian surface. Also, if Churong ceases to operate, this wouldn't be the end of China's Tianwen-1 Mars mission, because while the rover indeed has six scientific instruments which would stop working, the Tianwen-1 orbiter also has another seven, notably a couple of cameras, a spectrometer, a magnetometer, a ground penetrating radar, and two particle analyzers. And so in any case, Tianwen-1 will continue to perform scientific measurements in the near future. And if it manages to survive into the 2030s, it could also be a useful relay satellite for China's future Mars sample return mission, Tianwen-3. And with that being said, that's all for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.